This is George Taylor, and today we will be discussing the radiology of intravascular catheters in infants and children. The talk will cover the correct position of various intravascular catheters, including umbilical lines, central venous catheters, and ECMO catheters, along with examples of malpositions and their complications. We'll begin with an umbilical venous or UV catheter placement. The correct position for a UV catheter is at or near the inferior cavoatrial junction. A catheter whose tip is in high position is at risk for intra inaccurate sampling of O2 saturation because of its proximity to the coronary sinus. In infants, because the atrial wall is relatively thin, the catheter is in, that is in high position can lead to atrial perforation. UV catheters in low position are at higher risk for portal vein thrombosis and intrahepatic perforation. Here are four examples of UV catheter malposition. Case A shows the UV catheter with its tip in the left portal vein. In case B, the catheter is coiled within the liver, probably at the junction of the ductus venosus and portal veins. Case C, case C shows the UV catheters coursing into the right ventricle and entering the right ventricular outflow tract. Case D shows the UV catheter threaded up through into the superior vena cava. This is a premature infant whose umbilical venous and arterial catheters are in place. Notice the position of the UV catheter tip in figure A. It is in the right ventricular outflow tract. It was repositioned, and notice the increase in heart size shown in figure B. This infant had a hemopericardium and cardiac tamponade as the result of cardiac perforation. UV catheters that are low in position are associated with a number of hepatic complications, and they include portal venous gas, parenchymal lesions or hematomas, and left portal vein thrombosis. UV catheter malposition is common in patients with abnormal anatomy. Patient A has an atrioventricular canal, and the UV catheter tip has coursed through the intracardiac defects to reach the right superior pulmonary vein. In patient B, the UV catheter has entered the left portal vein, and the tip is in the vertical vein of a total anomalous pulmonary vein with infradiaphragmatic connection to the portal system. Here are two patients with a bogdelect hernia of the left diaphragm. In which patient is the catheter tip in intracardiac position? Patient A or patient B or both? The heart is deviated to the right in both patients. In patient A, the catheter follows the displaced heart. In patient B, the catheter is in the left chest away from the heart. This catheter tip is in the left lobe of the liver that is herniated up into the left chest along with the bowel. In patients with a large diaphragmatic hernia, the heart is so displaced to the right that the normal path of the catheter into the IVC right atrial junction is distorted and the path of least resistance is into the left lobe of the liver. In a study from our institution, we found that over half of the umbilical venous catheters in babies with diaphragmatic hernias were malpositioned and that radiologists misinterpreted their correct location in 30% of cases. Umbilical artery or UA catheters should be placed so that their tip is between the fifth and the eighth thoracic vertebra, inferior to the ductus arteriosus and above the renal arteries. Malpositioned UA catheters are at risk for inaccurate O2 saturation readings when close to the ductus and have been associated with vascular spasm and thrombosis when low in position in intra-abdominal location. One can usually distinguish an arterial venous um, umbilical catheter by their course uh, on a frontal x-ray. The umbilical artery catheter courses inferiorly to join the iliac arteries before curving towards the chest, while the umbilical venous catheter does not. Here are two examples of malpositioned UA catheters. The tip of the first catheter is near to the ductus arteriosus. The second catheter is high in the right neck at the level of the common carotid artery. 
Both catheters are too high in position and should be repositioned. The other commonly used catheters in children are centrally placed venous catheters. They're usually placed from a subclavian approach, and the correct position for a central venous catheter tip is at the junction of the superior vena cava and right atrium. Now, since the anatomic location of the SVC RA location junction cannot be directly visualized, we need to use other anatomic uh, landmarks. The junction is usually at between the fourth and fifth thoracic vertebral bodies in almost 90% of children. Other useful landmarks are the carina, and if the tip is within two vertebral bodies from the tracheal bifurcation on the chest x-ray, it is at or near the SVC right atrial junction. The catheter position may change considerably on an expiratory chest x-ray. It is important to consider inspiratory effort when judging catheter position, especially in the premature or um, very small newborn. Here is a newborn with a central venous catheter that takes an unusual course. In this situation, it's often helpful to obtain a lateral view of the chest. The tip of this catheter was in the azygous vein, located in more posterior position than the normal superior vena cava. Here are two children with recently placed central lines. Notice the different course that the catheter takes in patient B compared to patient A. The distal catheter in patient A is to the right of the spine, as shown with the orange line, and has a straight superior inferior course, while the catheter in patient B is located over the spine and has, and has a pronounced curve to the left. Catheter A is in the superior vena cava, while catheter B was inadvertently placed in the ascending aorta. When bilateral central lines are placed, the catheter from the left side is deflected downward by the lateral wall of the SVC. The catheter located placed from the right approach is deflected by the medial wall, and as a result, the catheters cross in the superior vena cava. And the distance between the two tips is not greater than the width of the SVC. In this patient, the right-sided catheter is in the superior vena cava, and the left-sided catheter is in the ascending aorta. Notice that they do not cross because the aorta is anatomically to the left of the SVC. The lateral chest x-ray can also be very helpful in identifying patients with an arterially misplaced venous catheter. The course of the SVC is straight on both the frontal and the lateral views, while the course of the ascending aorta curves more anteriorly. Finally, arterial venous ex extracorporeal membrane oxygenation, or ECMO for short, is often used in tertiary centers for cardiac and respiratory support. The venous catheter is inserted into the right jugular vein. It is larger than the arterial catheter, and the distal tip of it is not radio-opaque. Its tip can be identified by a small radio-opaque marker at the very tip of the venous catheter. The tip of the venous catheter should be located low in the right atrium as shown here. The arterial catheter is inserted via the right common carotid artery in the neck and its tip should be at the junction of the innominate artery and the aortic arch so that the oxygenated blood from the cannula can preferentially go to the brain via the left carotid artery. This child has a venous catheter that is high in position near the SVC RA junction, and the arterial ECMO catheter is located in the lower right carotid. Both catheters are too high in position to be in optimal location. The important final points that I wanted to leave you with are that newborns and premature infants are at especially high risk for catheter complications, particularly with UV catheters. It's important to recognize certain situations that increase the risk of diagnostic errors uh, in looking at catheters, and these include poor positioning of the patient, limited quality of the x-ray, and altered patient anatomy. Consider using the lateral chest x-ray as a problem-solving tool and always be aware of altered or distorted anatomy. Thank you.